Hi there, uh, we're here to tell you a little bit about an approach called Circles of Support which is a way of mobilising neighbours and friends around somebody who's isolated or needs a bit of extra support. So I'm Mark John Williams. And I am Mark One Tom. <laughs> also known as Tom McKay. And uh, we're a double act. Well, actually, just a single act. <laughs> we'll see. So we're, we're going to talk about circles of support. Tom is here because he has a circle of support, so he can help bring it to life. Um, so why might we need a circle of support? I'd already hinted at that. Um, we all know there's a big issue at the moment around loneliness and isolation in our communities. We know that lots of people are ending up in healthcare services um, because they're lonely and isolated. It affects their mental health. Um, but we also know that some people aren't in control of their life as they could be, and a circle of support does offer that as well. So circles were created a number of decades ago over in Canada. Um, I won't talk about that now, but it's been around for a long time and I've been using the approach in the UK for at least 20 years now. One of the issues that we have, as I've said, is people are ending up in healthcare services when maybe they needn't. So the idea is to actually you look at that cliff edge um, picture there, people at the edge of the cliff are falling over. Well, we think what needs to happen is we need to strengthen relationships around people because relationships are key to our well-being. We know that now. Uh, one of the major things to help you have a good and long and healthy life is good relationships uh, around you. So a circle of support is, is simply a way of inviting people closer to you. You may need a bit of support and you, you invite those people in and they become your, your circle. It's as simple as that, but it's easier said than done. Most of us have a natural circle, but when you become lonely and isolated, that shrinks and you, you become perhaps just dependent on, or, or alone, or dependent on a family member. So a circle helps you to mobilise people around, around you, but it's quite a, a carefully built process. So we use something called a Growing in Relationships map, <laughs> so when, when I, I talk to Tom about this, we use this mapping process to look at who are the people in his life, who are the friendly faces he could pull in. So Tom, for example, can you remember the first time we got people together, who were some of the people you invited in? Um, my mum, uh, two aunties and a couple of friends. Okay, so it's as simple as that, it's identifying those people and inviting them in. And this is what happens, you, you have people come together, so where do we, how do we meet in your circle, Tom, what happens? Uh, we meet at 7pm, uh, sometimes Mark likes to turn up quite early. <laughs> um, and coffee and biscuits. Yeah, so it's really, really informal. It's just people coming together. It's not a formal meeting, although some people like to make it more formal, but the more informal and welcoming it is, the more likely people will show up and they'll keep on on coming. So there's a typical picture of, of Tom's circle. Well, it's actually a square more than a circle. <laughs> So we started the, the circle, we, we used a, a process, a what matters to me conversation and we, um, we started talking about what Tom was interested in. But before we get on to that, we chat a little bit about why Tom needed a circle. So how was your life a year and a half, two years ago, what was going on? Uh, two years or whatever it was, um, I suffered from anxiety. Um, not the normal anxiety you'd hear about, um, but the version where you 
go out and you're unfortunately physically sick. Um, and I was stuck in the same five walls I counted last night um, with the bedroom and uh, just not wanting to go out. So you were a bit stuck, weren't you? Now, just bear in mind that Tom is a quite an able guy. He's a car driver. He has a car on the drive, but he can't go out because he, he's physically sick. So he's trapped, more or less, in his own home, just him and Mem. At the moment, yeah. <laughs> Mem, Mem has her own issues. She has bipolar disorder, so her well-being is very much up and down, or was at the time. Sometimes meaning she ended up in hospital. Um, and you know, it's just the two of them really codependent, and it, it wasn't great. Mum approached me at a conference where we talked about circles of support and said help. So I came and met Tom. We used this process. So what were the a couple of the, the things you wanted to change when we started the circle? Um, to get out a bit more and try some activities I enjoy. Um, to get better and feel healthier and do some trucking and mechanics. That's not the usual thing we hear, I want to do some trucking, so we we scratched our heads and thought about that, but the concept of a circle is you're creative and you're positive and you think about your connections. So when Tom spoke about trucking, I thought, oh, I've got a, a friend of mine, Simon, who's a truck driver, so I'll have a word. So we, he said, yeah, I'll come and meet Tom and we had a coffee together and they hit it off. And what did Simon offer? Simon offered a work experience um, slash holiday adventure um, on the truck. So lo and behold, when you get just a group of people together and you start talking and you start using your connections and you listen to what people want, stuff happens. So on this slide there's a picture of a a card I sent to Tom several months after we'd started the circle and there's a photograph of Tom on his trucking experience with Simon there's some stuff there about him using his musical ability and, and uh, being a bass player introduced Tom to uh, some musicians and a band and there's also a, a picture on there that you might not make out but it's of a convoy so Tom's going to tell us what what happened there? Well, Mark thought I wasn't in the convoy. He thought that it was just a picture I got off Google. Well, in fact, I was in the convoy of 140 trucks. And we were the only truck with a car horn instead of a big, beefy air horn. And uh, we annoyed quite a lot of um, passers-by and some enjoyed it. So what, what, how that happened was, you see in that picture there's Tom speaking in a workshop. So Tom's confidence was getting boosted and he was starting to get out and about after a few circle get-togethers because he realised there were people around him who cared about him. So that lifted his spirits a bit. and. He said to me, Mark, can I come and help put your training sessions? So he came to one in Wrexham. And then another, and then another. But at that first one, there were a couple of people who heard Tom's story about his trucking interest and they approached him. And one of them introduced him to somebody and I didn't know about anything about this and said there was a convoy happening in Ruthin that weekend. And so the pictures that Tom sent me were of him taking himself to the convoy and get in the trucks. With a complete stranger. And so following all of this stuff, this is this has all helped and Tom's now you have got a, the kind of voluntary work placement with a just H, about <laughs> just about an H G V training company. What else happened in December? Good question. In terms of being able to be a truck driver? Uh, I passed my H G V um, theory test. I've just got the CPC to do next. 
So, so Tom's now in a place where not only is he not isolated and restricted to home, he's out and about, he's doing stuff, he's training, he gets valued for that, he earns time and credits, he's teaching other people, he's inspiring other people, he's got himself into a place where he could be working in the trucking industry and also mum is better than she's ever been. She's um, quit smoking, she's going swimming, she's volunteering twice a week, helping other families. And this is all, um, this has just involved initially me for 20 hours over eight months working with Tom and his mum. That's all, 20 hours. And it's literally transformed things for him. And I'm sure there's more to come. It's still, we're on a journey, excuse the trucking pen, but there's more to come. And just making this film, I think, is a, is a big deal for Tom. But as you can see, he's doing really well. So just um, be. Um... Time credits used to be called spice credits, but obviously they had to change the name because of the news. So uh, it's called tempo credits. Yeah, because of the spice truck, that's pretty prominent. So we use time credits as a way of valuing <coughs> what Tom's doing. So just to finish off, a couple more stories. Um, so this is picture is a, of a guy called Robert, man had Asperger's syndrome, and he got people together. A uh, couple of false starts, but you see this picture again. It's really informal, having food on the table, chatting, conversation. And what Robert said after his circle had been going for a while was, before my circle, I felt very insecure. I had a few friends, but felt I was drifting, with no sense of real purpose. Uh, now I feel much more fulfilled and my friends value me as a person. I know they'll always be there for me to deal with any problems and de develop my ambitions. So he went on and achieved all kinds of extraordinary things. He got engaged, he, did, he worked, he wrote a thesis um, and did all kinds of things. And then it's a, a guy called Neil and uh, he was getting bullied a lot at the time we got involved with him. We built a circle around him, but what I remember him saying, which I thought was very important, was who am I if I have no friends? You're defined in a way by your relationships, the context of your relationships. So I thought that was quite touching really. And then we helped him get together with friends and family. You can see he's a really engaging guy. There's some of his friends from the place where he works. And he's had a circle going, it's now a kind of telephone circle. It's been going for over 20 years. Uh, people are building circles around older people. As we all know, we're all living longer, but that often means we're living with health conditions that affect us. So people are using the circles approach around older people who have become isolated. Uh, so for example, in um, Doncaster, they're building 400 circles around older people. are using circles and I've used circles in the transition process when young people are moving from childhood to adulthood. So this is a young woman I work with in Marlinshire, a young woman who doesn't use words to speak, which you might think could, would make the experience difficult, but she had nearly a whole village turn up to support her through her life. She's actually a very engaging young woman. She's got an amazing smile and lots to offer. And finally this is a a brief story of my brother, this is how I started my journey with circles. My brother Andrew happens to have Down syndrome. He wanted to have a better life for himself, he wanted to make more of his relationships. And he was lucky enough that he eventually wrote a play about his circle called Full Circle. So this photographs of his circle plus the cast of the play. And, and, and that circle transformed his life and he was able to do all kinds of things around his relationships and his social interests like going to watch bands, going to watch his favourite football team but he was also able to go on an amazing trip to the Himalayas just with the support of ordinary people helping him to fundraise, to get fit, to pursue a really big goal and that's what the play was about and consequently his life is rich and full of people his circle don't meet that much anymore, but he's got loads and loads of friends. But one of the things that people say about circles is that you're inviting people in and maybe you're not DBS checking them, that's a bit risky. But yeah, you, you're not, of course you're doing that quite carefully, you're mapping 
through a relationship process. You're inviting people in you already know and you're growing it. And I would say, what's the risk of not inviting people into your life? You're actually more vulnerable if you don't have people around you. And when I go to my brother's pub, and I don't know some of his friends. Now I'll have one of his friends each and every time nudging Andrew saying, who's that? And what they're doing, of course, they're checking me out on his bath. So he's got those eyes and ears all around him that make him safe, but he's also really liberated. He's out there living a life. And if he's ill or anything happens, he's got friends coming out of the woodwork saying, where's Andrew? So before we get to the final couple of slides. This is just a quote from a guy called Al Ekmansky who says, a good life is a human life, a human life is a social life. The essence of human nature is to be in the company of others. Companionship, fellowship and connection to others are essential to our well-being. Love is the most pervasive and persistent aspect of our nature. It's an unquenchable thirst and a fountain of nourishment. We are interdependent, not independent creatures. The impact of this recognition is far greater than we can acknowledge and understanding this is critical to our health, our quality of life, a sense of belonging, peace of mind and our security. It's profoundly important. And Tom, do you want to read out on the slide another quote there? Never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever has. And I think that really sums it up. So just to finish, Tom, what we're going to encourage people to do? And uh, if you would like to hear or talk to me about anything we've spoke about today, um, join... Um, Get in touch. Get in touch, yeah. <laughs> get in touch because we can run workshops and we can do full on training days where we really get to grips with this. You can email me on markpcpwilliams at aol.com, but we come as a package, as a training team. So, well, just a single training <laughs> package. Thanks for yeah. listening to us. Cheers.